Well, there's an interesting energetic that we're working with this week where we're trying to find a common ground between our will and our mind. In this week's Astro Tarot, we have seven cards and they all seem to be centered around two particular suits, the wands and the swords. Uh, before I jump into that, I want to just go ahead and share what's going on in the sky so that tonight and, and tomorrow morning, if you wake up early enough, you can identify some of the planets that you see in the sky. So we are currently today uh, sitting with the sun at four degrees of Virgo. We have uh, Mercury up here at 21 degrees of Leo. It's in retrograde. It is going to be stationing direct in a couple of days and starting to move forward again. We also have uh, Mars up here in Gemini, followed by the planet of Jupiter, closely in proximity to the moon, all in Gemini. And then we have Uranus still sitting at 27 degrees of Taurus, we have Chiron up in Aries, Neptune at 29 degrees of Pisces moving retrograde, Saturn at 16 degrees of Pisces moving retrograde, and Pluto still sitting at zero degrees of Aquarius retrograde. And then we have Venus over here at 27 degrees of Virgo. Now, Virgo is actually a earth governed sign as is the planet of, I'm sorry, the sign of Taurus. And so we ha currently have Uranus at 27 degrees of Taurus and Venus at 27 degrees of Taurus. So because they're 120 degrees apart, they would be considered a trine, which is a beneficial energy that we can make use of, especially if you have any planetary placements in either of those degrees, you'll be getting some assistance by that. But consider that that trine relationship is with the planet that is the cause of great unexpected change and out of that is out of the ordinary. And then the planet of Venus, which is honestly a very loving, compassionate, relationship oriented planet. So we may be needing to make a change after we come to some kind of conclusion or epiphany by way of Virgo, because the sign of Virgo is a sign that assimilates information and breaks down information and separates the coarse from the fine and also looks at their daily routines and what's practical. It is a earth ruled sign that is governed by the planet of Mercury. Now Mercury, as I just mentioned, is going to be stationing direct in a couple of days and then it will be moving into the sign of Virgo. So then we'll have a good amount of energy in the sign of Virgo. So wherever Virgo is sitting in your natal chart, consider this is a diagram that is anchored wherever your rising sign is. So if you have a rising sign of Sagittarius, you're going to see Virgo up here in your 10th house. If you have you know, a rising sign of Pisces, Virgo is going to be over here in your seventh house. So your rising sign really does set the dial, so to speak, or set where the anchor is on this diagram for you so that you know where these planets are going to be showing up in your life. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into the tarot. Um, by the way, I'm Katie Cat. This is our weekly Astro Tarot. I am reading with the deck that I originally hand drew about 12 years ago. I just got it printed. It's called Delaney's Classic Tarot. And you can order it on my website at rootsofalchemy.com. So our opening card that we have today is governed by the wands. We have the three of wands. We see a person who's looking out across a body of water that has ships in it. They have one wand in their hand, one wand to their side, and one wand behind them. Now, this is the card of the reluctant adventurer. And they're reluctant because they don't know how they're going to be passing over this body of water to get to this land mess over here. And yet the message behind this card is to move forward because help is on the way. And we forget that a lot of times. We think we have to do everything on our own and we have to outthink everything and plan everything. But a lot of times when we need help, it will arrive. And I don't know if you've ever been in a traveling situation, but when you're in a place of the unknown, help and messengers will come to you to help you learn how to pass this precipice. So move forward because help is on the way. 
Now, the challenge that we have coming in for this week is a major arcana. It is the temperance card. Now, this is a card that is depicted by someone who is clothed in a long white robe, and they have two goblets in their hand, one that's pouring into the other. And within those two goblets, we see this stream that's intertwined between the red and blue colorations. And this is about finding balance in a situation and using two opposing forces to find some kind of common ground. This is also giving us a sense of hope. It's a card of help and a card of um, in a teacher in a lot of ways because it's we have to learn how to use opposing forces to work towards something kind of like water and fire which is depicted by the energetics of this card we also see that they have one foot in a body of water and one foot on land so that is also kind of a you know message of balance and in the background if you look closely you can see this path that goes up to two peaks and there is a little crown that is highlighted in that peak so the path isn't always easy, right? The path actually comes out of friction and challenge and learning to overcome things that could at first be perceived as difficult. And so this showing up as our challenge is really asking us to take a look at the two opposing forces in our lives and how they can help to support one another, much like the distillation process that can happen when you combine fire and water. You can get something that's refined from it. You can get something that is very pure from it, particularly in the sense of essential oils. But that's just an example to draw from. You yourself will be working with this challenge in your own life. Now consider that we have the planet of Jupiter currently in the sign of, Ge of Gemini. It was just in close proximity to Mars, which is also up in Gemini. And then we also have the moon up in Gemini. So there's a lot of energy in the sign of Gemini right now, wherever that sign sits in your natal chart. And it's bringing a level of expansion. And so th this friction could be from that need of expansion and that call to call to move forward, which is what Mars is doing in that space. So what idea, what project have you been needing to expand upon that maybe you've just had in the recesses of your mind and you haven't been applying yourself to it for the next two years you will feel this expansion because we just had that combination of J jupiter and mars in close proximity and the moon passing over that space right now is an interesting uh, phase because the moon itself is in a waning process meaning that it is going back toward being a new moon it will be a new moon on the second or third of september depending on where exactly you live and the time of day um, that you'll be able to see a, a new moon which is a dark moon it's a time of new beginnings and so right now we're learning what we need to let go of quite literally because we have all of this energy over in virgo which is recalibrating us towards our priorities and what is practical and what we need to let go of in order to move forward to what we are called and inspired to move toward. So this showing up as our challenge, I don't want it to seem like it is, you know, the challenge itself is going to bring hardship, but it definitely brings an awareness of two forces that you can use to progress yourself. Now, that was uh, followed by a card that is the way that we're going to get through the challenge. Now, this is the page of want, of swords. We see someone standing out in the open. They are surrounded by all of these clouds that are bursting through a, a blue sky, and they have one sword in their hand. Now, the page of swords is a communication card. It is often associated with the sign of Mercury or Gemini because those are communications ruled signs and we have Jupiter up in the sign of Gemini right now. We have Mars in the si sign of Gemini right now. So what communications need to be able to take place to move toward this expansion? There is a light coming to this and what maybe that you you want to say but could actually be problematic that isn't necessarily useful. There's these two 
energies that we need to look at, especially because we have Mercury retrograde right now. It's about to move direct. When it moves direct, it will be moving into a square relationship with the planet of Uranus. Now, it's also going to be in a square relationship pretty quickly, or I'm sorry, Venus is going to be in a square relationship with Mars because they're both towards the end degrees of those mutable signs. And then we have the square relationship that's happening between Mercury and Uranus. So there's some change that we are being invited to embrace and it will be instigated through communications. Communication is the key this week, ultimately and overall. Now, the ultimate outcome, we have four cards. One of them is a Marja Arcana, two are wands, and one are swords. So as you can see, we have a lot of energy in those two suits of the wands and the swords. Literally two sword cards and four wand cards. So our will is really at the forefront of this week, where we're putting our energy and effort, where we feel the need to engage, and how we engage, and what is behind our need to engage. Are we engaging because we want to create conflict? Are we engaging because we want to create peace? How do we create that peace? How do we use the two opposing forces to create some kind of common ground that is ultimately productive? That's the question. So the ultimate outcome came through as the Hermit card. Now, the Hermit card is associated with the sign of Virgo, which we have currently the sun and Venus, and then we will have Mercury here in Virgo in in, a, in about a week or so. And Mercury governs the sign of Virgo, but Virgo is more practically oriented. So we're in a place of healing and a place of, in some ways, some kind of inner observation or isolation because we see this person who is standing at a mountain peak far separated from the world, and they have this lantern in, in their hand. So the energetic behind this is healing ourselves so that we can provide some kind of light to others. And also looking at how we live our daily lives and our routines and what we need to be putting energy and effort towards because we have Venus over in the sign of Virgo, which is asking us to tend to ourselves and asking us to really look at what we need to nurture ourselves and what isn't working for ourselves. So we may be in a place of re-evaluating re our day-to-day -day life and where we put our energy and effort and, and sh shining that light, not only on ourselves, but those that surround us. That was further clarified by the Six of Wands. We see a person who is riding a horse with a wand in their hand. There's a laurel leaf wreath at the very tip of that wand and a flag of some sort and they are moving in a new direction and they have the support of the people that are around them so this is moving forward based on past successes and we see a kind of victorious nature to this like what are we overcoming it's that which we overcome that allows the greatest possibility in our lives and we need to remember that Challenges are like that. Challenges show us what we're capable of and what's important to us based on where we're called to act and where we are called to respond. That was further clarified by the two of wands. So we see one, one wand in the person's hand that is standing in what looks like a balcony, maybe in a castle or some kind of building. And they're looking upon the landscape in front of them that has a a body of water and a ship on it and they have an orb or a sphere in their hand and behind them there is a second wand that is bolted to the wall behind them and so this is also an energetic of wanting to move out towards something new this is a card of dominion and yet it also is pointing to the fact that there is something behind us that we ultimately need to take care of and tend to in order for us to have the freedom and the enterprise to move into a new direction because it is a two after all so it's a reflective card of these two different aspects of our will something that is telling us to stay and tend to something whereas the second one is calling us to new things. So it's like the call of the wild, being called to some new experience, which is beckoning to us. And yet we have to tend to this thing behind us in order for us to be able to move forward in a clear way. 
So that's a pretty powerful sequence that was then followed up by this final card of the Four of Swords. Now in the Four of Swords, we see someone laying in a gray toned building. They have a sword underneath them. They have their hands in a prayer position and a little leaf is growing out of their hands. And above them, we see these three swords that are framed on the wall. And above that, there's a little bitty stained glass window that is the only color that you see in this card aside from the little leaflet that is growing out of their hands. Now, this is the card of the long question because the stable mental energy swords are associated with with communication, thinking, anything in the realm of mental activity or the mind. And this could be bringing some kind of paralysis to our uh call of the wild so to speak because we're stuck in the mind we're trying to frame it out we're trying to create some kind of stability and yet we need to consider that where we put our mind our attention that's what we call into our lives and this person being in a state of prayer is an interesting stance you know because when we pray for something to happen or open ourselves up to the unknown we don't get to define how it shows up we only get to be open to the experience itself. And so it's important for us to realign ourselves to that which is important to us, important to our heart, that really we are in a place of wanting to build and are wanting to be called toward in order to grow that rather than to grow fear or um, any of the negative emotions that one might focus on if they feel like something is out of alignment. This is a space of opening ourselves up to the unknown instead of fixating ourselves completely in the mind. And it's important to consider that the mind can often be a prison that can paralyze us because we're so busy thinking about everything that we don't actually, we don't have the ability to act. And yet we have these energetics going on astrologically, which are putting us in these interesting positions energetically with these planetary alignments that are creating friction in our lives so that we do move toward a higher ground, right? When the water starts raising, you don't just sit there and stare at it and, you know, call your friends over and say how scary it is. You move toward higher ground. If you're out in the wilderness and you need to eat, right? You start foraging for food. You don't just curl up and, you know, complain how hungry you are. There's something in your experience that's calling you to act and staying in the mind can be problematic because it prevents movement, even though, you know, the element of air has a nature of movement to it. But in this space, we see kind of a stagnancy. So consider that the frictions that are happening in your life are there for a reason. They're there to call some kind of reflection and ask you to show up in a way that are in alignment with how you want to be seen in the world and who you are in the world, ultimately. And hopefully it's a balance between not just the mind and the will, but also the body and your emotional heart. I send a good wish to you. I hope you are well. Um, if you're interested in looking at your own natal chart, feel free to reach out to me. And you can either write to me at rootsofalchemy at gmail.com or you can order a reading from me through my website at rootsofalchemy.com. I send you a good wish. I hope you are well and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.